We have completed the B, 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 and E challenge, and I cannot wait to share with you our results. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Can you believe we went 31 days with having only beef, butter, bacon, and eggs? I cannot wait to share with you my results. You know, I really didn't think I could do this, to be honest with you, when we first started. I wasn't sure how hardcore I could commit to because I have done carnivore in the past, but my version of carnivore was like carnivore, but still had lots of cheese, carnivore, but had my processed meats, carnivore definitely had my dairy, my creams, and I definitely had my sweeteners. I couldn't do without that. You know, so even though I got rid of some veggies, most veggies, all veggies, when I was doing carnivore, all veggies, I couldn't really fully commit to the extent of beef, bacon, butter, and eggs for this amount of time. At least I didn't think I could. And then after leaving KetoCon and really diving into all of the information that we received over that weekend, I was excited to try it. I knew I needed to try it. I remember having one morning my coffee without sweetener and just feeling miserable. And I remember my friend, my buddy Brian would tell me, he's like, you haven't broken that sugar addiction yet. You've replaced it with sweetener. When you always have something sweet in your mouth, you're always going to crave something sweet. And I was in denial. I didn't want to let go of my bangs. I didn't want to let go of sweeteners in my coffee. I didn't want to let go of anything. Like, I mean, I would have my Lily's chocolates and I would make my desserts and I didn't want to let go of any of that stuff. It was my crutch. It was my, my comfort, my little comfort blanket. Like I, I felt like I was doing enough. Like I, what I was doing should be enough already to get me where I want to go. Why do I have to do more? Why do I have to be stricter? Why do I have to do the extra, extra 5% more? Why? And it was in doing that extra 5% more that I realized the why, you know, it's like I've done well over the course of almost four years on this journey and I've done like 95% of the way, right? Like I said, I couldn't get rid of that 5% and then doing the BBB and E challenge has made me go full throttle the 100% and it's made all the difference in the world. I feel 100% different than I did at the beginning of the month. So let's talk exactly what we did not have this month. I realized that I'm not sure if I actually like coffee because drinking it black is not my jam and not having sweetener in it is not, is not pleasurable for me. So it's like, well, maybe it was the sweetness in the coffee that made me want to drink the coffee every morning because I could blend uh, an egg yolk or a tablespoon of butter into my coffee and still get the creaminess without adding dairy but I still didn't enjoy it as much if it didn't have that sweetener in it. So what I decided to do for this entire challenge was to just get rid of the coffee because I saw a video, I can't remember if it was Dr. Chafee or Dr. Barry, where it said, if there's anything that you just can't part with, that's probably the thing that you needed to part with. And I just couldn't part with my coffee or I just couldn't part with my sweetener. Well, all those things that I was holding on to for dear life is exactly what I needed to let go. My cheese, I made cheese with everything because I didn't want to let go of my cheese is why I needed to let go of my cheese. So anything that I felt attached to, to where I couldn't possibly do it all the way, except for this thing, like that's what I needed to get rid of. So this month I did not have coffee no dairy of any kind, no heavy creams, no cream cheeses, no cheese, no dairy at all, um, no sweeteners, that's the big one, no stevia, no Mio's, nothing sweet at all. Not even my electrolyte mixes that had the flavored sweeteners, like I ordered the raw ones so I wouldn't have anything sweet. Um, so no sweeteners, no alcohol, not a drip, <laughs> not a sip, Nothing, no alcohol for this entire month of May. No seasonings other than salt. I didn't even put pepper on my food. We didn't put garlic powder, onion powder, every all the usual suspects that we normally cook with did not do it. 
this month at all. We only had salt and no other beverages this month except for water. We didn't have tea, we didn't have any diet sodas or juices or diet sugar-free anything, nothing. We had water and occasionally, I could probably count on one hand how many times I had a sparkling water this month. But other than that, it was mainly just water. Um, only twice this entire challenge did I have something other than the beef bacon. I had beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. We did have pork belly and I did have pork rinds, um, but I usually like blended it to make a poffle or something like that or snacked on it at the beach, uh, but I didn't have it often. Probably I can count on one hand how many times I had pork rinds this entire month. But two of the days I did allow myself to, well, one day for my birthday, I allowed myself to get off and have other meats um, that's where I had ribs, I had a chicken wing, I've got a chicken. Um, I'm trying to think what else. The majority of everything at that Brazilian steakhouse was red meat, so I was pretty much um, on track there. But I did have sausage at the Brazilian steakhouse. And I did have sausage again the day after my birthday when we were at a friend's house. So only twice this month did I have sausage. But other than that, we stayed the course. Um, and it, it's been really good. All right, so before we get into what our experience was like these past 31 days, you know, I was looking through some YouTube videos and all of my usual suspects that I normally watch, you know, I'm, I'm watching their videos now, right? These are people that I've followed for the past four years and I'm seeing them do their recipe videos and, and eat all of their keto friendly meals and snacks and packaged things and, and douse their meals in cheese and cream and like all the things that I used to do on my journey these past, I mean, you've seen it. I mean, I stuff my chicken breast with cream cheese, spinach. And they were great. They, they were weren't. great. They weren't. <laughs> it's really good. Wrap it in bacon, do all of that. But you know, it's funny because after being on this journey for four years now, almost four years coming up this summer, I had lost 85 pounds within that first year and then just kind of struggled the past three years, just kind of held on to it. And watching these videos again for people who I was doing the same exact thing and I see them struggling still like I was, I see them gaining weight like I was, you know? And so it was just kind of this little epiphany in watching these videos and going, you know, this is exactly what I used to do. This is exactly how I used to eat. These are the things that I couldn't let go of, my treats and my Quest Bars and my protein chips and my bangs and my desserts and my sweeteners and like all the things, all the things. And the one thing that this um, challenge for me, I feel is, is really simplified things like getting out all the extras that I thought I needed but at the end of the day didn't need like all the extra stuff right I agree and it was like uh we we've minimalized everything you they tell you minimalize your stuff minimalize your things minimize minimalize <laughs> the way you live and now it's just like Minimize the way you eat. Why do you need? Yeah. Why do you need everything? To, it's so crazy. Why do you going, need sides? Thirty-one days of eating just meat, right? And you realize, you know, even going to a restaurant, like even going to the Brazilian steakhouse, right? We go to Brazilian steakhouse. They have an entire salad bar over there filled with stuff so, enough to make a meal, <laughs> right? Enough to make a meal. Then they're coming with all the meat, which is the highlight, right? Then they bring you bread. Then they bring you um, three starchy, carby sides, the mashed potatoes, the beans, and the white rice, right? And then it, it just was like, it was, none of it was needed. It was like, we were just eating the meat, all the protein and the fat, because we did ask for the butter. And it was like, God, we do this all the time. When you go to restaurants, you get an appetizer, you get a salad, then you get your meal, then you get a dessert, then you're drinking, you know, alcohol or you know high calorie mixed drinks i mean it's just crazy our culture our culture i mean even with my birthday and mother's day this month it was like the culture of it of you know let's get you a cake let's feed you let's have a big dinner and everybody come over and let's get a cake and it's like wow everything is centered around food celebration is centered around food and and like the sh carby sugary foods it's not even just 
eat. Food. Yeah, it's not nourishment. <laughs> it's just all the indulgences. It's yeah. crazy. So how do you feel? Like at the end of the month, what can you say have been the biggest changes and how do you feel? I, I feel great. I think the biggest, my biggest thing was the weigh in and, and the sizing thing and whatever that knocked me down. It was like, you feel great, you look great, you you see a difference in your body, you, you feel it in your body, you get up easier, I go to sleep easier, I don't need alarms, I don't need yeah. whatever to get to, to bed. But then they, you... We haven't in. said, we haven't okay. said our way in. Then you weigh in, you weigh in, you weigh in, <laughs> and then it's like, oh. Okay, let's go, let's get to the weigh in. Let's get to the weigh in and then we'll chat about our reactions, okay? okay? So, I weighed in at the beginning of the challenge at 182.6. I weighed in at the end of the challenge at 178.4. So it is a total loss this month of 4.2 pounds. It's a loss, it's a loss. And, and I'm going through my app and I am seeing the last time I weighed this amount was December 31st of last year. So literally all of 2023, I have not been in the 170s. I have not been this low. So I will take that as a win. Yes, I was disappointed that it wasn't more because like you said, we felt great. Like I, I was like, I feel myself shrinking. Yeah. I feel myself lighter. I feel myself stronger. Yeah. Like I bet I lost, you know, seven to 10 pounds. I bet, I bet, you know? And, and so clothes, clothes the clothes fit me different. So I was like, oh, I feel, oh, we didn't even go over the inches, but let's go over his weight and then we'll talk about inches lost. So I weighed in at 186.6 and then finished off at 182.8, which is yes, 3.8 pounds, uh, which was not my mindset to go in and, and, and go for a weight loss thing. Yeah. But just thinking of, oh, well, I went from a extra large shorts or pants yeah. to a large pants, and now the larges are a little bit big. Like we yeah. went, uh, we went somewhere where I needed a, a swim yeah. swim shorts, and the the larges look like they're they look like my, they're my dad's. And, yeah. Uh, I I think we're going down to a medium, and it's like, yeah. oh my god, this is this is a lot. Uh, pictures, uh, videos of whatever we take, and it's like, oh my god, that that is a lot. Yeah. My driver's license, uh, just pictures we we show to people. It's like, man, this is a uh, it's a lot of weight, and it to be 3.8 pounds just jacks with your mind. It jacks with your head. It's like, oh, that's it? But if come, that was your goal. We've come a long way from the beginning though. Like your your driver's yes. license was yes. an old picture. It wasn't yeah. from the beginning of this challenge. So yes, we've come a long way on our journey from beginning to now. Uh, but I think our expectation because of how great we felt and because it felt like we were shrinking. It felt huge. Yeah. I was like, so I really was so excited to weigh in because I'm like, oh, I cannot wait to, I want to see like, am I, do you think I would have hit, you know, 165 already? Like I had all these like envisions of, I don't know what to expect. I will say though, putting that scale away for the entire month, life changing, life changing for me. I don't know how it is for you. You were never obsessed with weighing yourself. I, I mean, I weigh myself every day if, if it was staring at me, you know, every time I jump in the shower, I'm going to throw myself on that scale just to kind of see and I can get obsessed about it. So literally weighing myself day one and not weighing myself until the end of the challenge was so nice because I wasn't obsessing about anything. I wasn't wanting to change anything because whatever I ate this week didn't work because I was up two pounds. Like none of that happened. I was just living my life, eating my meat, not tracking, not weighing, not measuring, not fasting, not trying to do anything, but eat when I was hungry and get full off of it and stick to what we said we were gonna do, so. It was easy, it was easy to stick to. It wasn't yeah. a, it didn't seem like a task to stick to it yeah. at home. And then you go out with friends or you go to different places and it's like. Yeah, then people's like, reactions. And then it's like, what do you eat? What do you, what do you, it, we were new at that. Yeah. I was new at that. If I had a con, right? Because there's a lot of pros. Let's go over the pros. Like my pros, I felt 
like my hair got thicker. I, there were so many times where he would be like, your hair looks fuller. And normally I'm always complaining that my, I have no hair. Um, so you too, you felt so, like yeah. you had. Yeah. So we would go out and Ivy would be like, dad, you could see, you could see your head. I was like, what do, <laughs> your you, scalp. what do you mean? You could see your scalp. <laughs> oh, sorry. And then now it's like fuller. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, I think we both feel really great. Like I, we feel more energetic, not sluggish, not needing a nap in the middle of the day most most days. I mean, I'm sleeping better. Uh, I'm energetic, like I want to do stuff. I want to go on a walk. I want to go to the gym. I want to lift weights because I feel strong. There's something about eating meat that makes you feel like like it, you're eating it and it's going straight to your muscles. <laughs> and so you just want to work those out. So it'll eat all of that protein that you yeah. just got. Yeah, I but. find myself doing pull-ups in the back just off of the, oh, yeah. the patio uh, structure. Uh, so I'll be waiting on, a, on on something to flip or put some burgers yeah. on or put whatever on and wind up knocking out eight to 10 reps of pull-ups. It's like, yeah. hey, I can do this. Maybe my wife's watching me through the window or something. <laughs> yeah, one of the things too that I think is a pro that we've learned that we didn't know maybe the first one or two days, but as we got on with it was meal prepping or kind of meat prepping um, because if we had to defrost meat every single day and figure out what we were going to eat I think that would be a lot of head space for us to like oh gosh we didn't defrost anything and now I'm hungry and I don't know what to eat and, uh, and this time it's like now we just throw a bunch of burgers or a bunch of ribs or let's make some big roast and then keep it in the fridge and if we're hungry later we'll make some eggs and bacon or we'll cut off some of that roast and, and it was just helpful to kind of meal prep, don't you think? I do. I do think we need a Blackstone though. <laughs> and if you like grilling, this is the thing for you to do. I love to grill and I don't mind yeah. waiting for the fire. I don't mind waiting for the charcoal to burn down or the yeah. wood to get uh, where it needs to be. I don't mind it. I've got a seat outside. I can check it out. I've taken the sun. It's it's good. I mean, I, I dig it. What do you think are cons or downsides of this experiment this month well at first i thought man this is pricey this is really yeah. expensive but then you go back and think we haven't thrown anything away because yeah. we ate everything yeah. before we would we would spend a little bit less on on groceries but then wind up throwing away <laughs> yeah. mostly because the salad went bad or nobody yeah. ate the tomatoes that we had here or yep. Or avocados, avocados you should have eaten the first three days and yeah. have a schedule to eat certain things. And it, now it's just like yeah. everything's being eaten, which is good. I, yeah. I don't think we're wasting money at all. And I think, you know, we're utilizing our Sam's membership. We don't have a Costco oh, yeah. here, but we're utilizing our Sam's membership because we were going to HEB and getting smaller packages because that's all that we had but us traveling to sam's and getting let's get the big cut or let's get the package of ribeyes that are eight dollars off this week you know like that saves us money so we're definitely utilizing that i think for me one of the downsides was maybe social awkwardness um because we had to be around other people on mother's day and my birthday and friends' houses and stuff. And I think it's just that, um, I think it's just me, my, my social awkwardness. But you know, we're not drinking, we're not drinking alcohol. Oh, we even had a bonfire on the beach, you know, and other people are drinking. Uh, or what are, what are you guys eating? You know, you, you, did you get any potato salad and stuff like that? And it's always like, okay, do we tell them we're on a challenge? Uh, you know, are they gonna think we're being weird or do we just eat our meat? And so for me, I you know, I, I do, feel awkward about it and having to explain it and wondering what they're thinking. Are they thinking we're killing ourselves and you know, like we're, our health is going to deteriorate, but at the same time we feel great. So maybe they'll ask us, you know, out of curiosity because they want to do it. I don't know. Yeah, it was it's a great just... conversation starter. The, the last one was like, what are you doing? Well, yeah. Hey, look at my license. I pulled out my yeah. license. Whatever. It's working. It's like whatever we're doing is working. <laughs> so, okay. So let me talk about measurements real quick and then we'll talk about what's next for us. Um, so as far as measurements, I am so glad I pulled out the tape measure to measure ourselves because honestly that 4.2 pounds or the 3.8 pounds that we lost, we would have been like, wah, wah, this didn't work. Why, why are we doing this? Let's do something else. But the measurements, y'all, I lost an overall six and a half inches off my body these past 31 days. I lost an inch off 
my chest, <laughs> an inch off my chest, an inch off my arms, an inch and a half off my waist, and a, a no, two and a half inches off my waist, two and a half inches off my waist, and an inch and a half off my hips. So my body is definitely shrinking. Caesar lost three quarters of an inch, an inch off his waist. I don't know if I did this right, but we have two and a quarter inches off his hips. I don't know if he lost that much on there, but I don't know if I, I did it wrong or not. His thighs, he went down a quarter of an inch. His calf went down a quarter of an inch. Uh, his body fat went down 0.8. So that was another thing on our Renfo scale. You know, we're able to see our BMI and everything. And so my BMI went down 0.8 on this challenge. My body fat went down 0.8. My visceral fat, which is my trouble area of my belly, went down one point. Um, my muscle mass, which I thought was odd, went down 1.6 pounds. So maybe I'm not working out nearly as much. Um, and yeah, my weight went down 4.2. So um, yeah, it, it, would you call it a success? Yeah, I would call it a success for sure. Yeah, yeah. I would too. I would too. I win. Because, like I said, I haven't been this weight. I haven't had a loss like this in a month in, in a while, I think. Even though it's probably averaging, well, it is averaging a pound a week. Um, I haven't had a loss like this. I've been teetering or I've been gaining and then it's just been a struggle. And then I get frustrated and then I come off of it. And then I, you know, it, so this has been, you know, it was nice to see. So moving forward, what do you want to do after BBB and E? Life after BBB and E. What's it look like for you? Uh, I definitely will will be more conscious of what I'm eating. I don't think I'm going to add in sides. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll continue with the social awkwardness and <laughs> meet everything. Yeah. I think I think before when we would go to events like that, I, even Caesar was really big on it. For me, I was a little bit more strict, but he would be so very like, he'll eat. He wasn't trying to do keto or non-keto or, you know, if they had potatoes and he wanted to taste it, he would eat it. He wasn't on any kind of restricting, restriction kind of diet. Uh, but now doing this and going to KetoCon with me and kind of going down the rabbit hole of the carnivore world, I think it's kind of made oh, him Lashed see. <laughs> it's made him see things yeah. in a whole new light. Yeah. So you think you're going to move forward carnivore? I do, uh, especially joint-wise. Like... I feel good. My back's still a little bit, or my hips still a little bit achy. So I want to try to go a little longer to see if it eventually takes it all away. But the majority of the month, your hip pain was gone, right? Yes. And it wasn't towards the end of the month wow. when we ate the sausage at, uh, we had sausage twice in that one weekend um, when we were at the Brazilian steakhouse and we were at a friend's house. So it could be the sausage that might have activated his his hip pain or or inflammation or something we're not sure but this is why we did this as a an elimination diet because we want to start adding things in so for me i plan on staying carnivore i want to continue doing carnivore maybe not so strict on bbb and e um i, I can't bring in the sugar i can't bring in the sweeteners i can't bring in. i can bring in the coffee but i only like my coffee with the sweeteners so there's no point in bringing that in it's just going to make me want a sweeter coffee and then i'm going to reach for a stevia and there goes all of that so i'm going to keep my distance with the coffee i'm going to keep my distance obviously with any other product packaged keto friendly yada 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 keeping my distance with that so i'm mainly going to do carnivore i think the only thing for me that i'm going to add back is maybe teeter with dairy but a little bit a little bit not like what i used to do so uh, allow myself cheese or whatnot here and there but not make it an everyday staple or drown my food in the cream and, and dairy like i used to uh, I am going to keep weighing myself only at, you know, the beginning and the end of every month and just kind of keep track that way along with measuring myself because I think that's a nice gauge. So I'm curious to see how me introducing back dairy is going to affect me moving forward. You're going to do carnivore. How strict? Uh, I'm going to add a whiskey. Oh, you're going to start uh, alcohol again? Just a little bit. I'll see, what, see if I'm going to put that in first <laughs> since that's the biggest thing that I, that I like, that I enjoy. I'll put that in first to see if there's any ailments. I was fine. I was nervous about getting rid of alcohol this month, but I was surprisingly fine with how 
not awkward it was for me in those situations and how sparkling water kind of did the trick for me. And I loved how I felt after me not drinking. So yeah. I think I'm going to continue the no alcohol for June as well, because I know when I drink alcohol, no matter how keto friendly, <laughs> low carb, yada, 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 it is drinking alcohol when you're on a weight loss journey is not they, they don't go together. They don't go together. So for me, if I allow myself to drink alcohol, it's like allowing myself to have rice and potatoes and bread. I mean, in my head, because my body's going to eat that up first instead of help me get to my goals. So if I if I'm I'm on this right track, I'm feeling good. I'm going to keep going until I get to where I want to go. So I, I won't drink around here. No well, thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, so that's the plan moving forward. We do want to continue doing carnivore. I do want to introduce back all kinds of proteins. I, I know that chicken wings we can overeat. Uh, I know drumsticks and chicken thighs and all these other proteins are still part of carnivore. I know it's easy to overeat, but I am going to allow myself to bring it. I'm still not going to track and weigh and measure. I'm not going to try and overdo the fat either because I know we get a lot uh, of fat in our ribeyes and so that should sustain us. I don't know, we're gonna kind of experiment with keto, keto, or not keto, we're gonna experiment with carnivore this month and see how we do. More organ meats? Oh no, not for Come me. Come on. He can have all the liver. All the liver in the world, I'm not. Oh, we did have tongue, yeah. I don't know if there's an organ. Is it? I don't know, I don't know. I had tongue and then I had um, beef brain. This at, at uh, our friend's house. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. So that is it for today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. If you've not subscribed already, make sure to hit that subscribe button now. Do all the YouTube things. Give me a like, share it, leave me a comment, all that good stuff. Leave me a comment. Let me know what do you think now, now that we're done with our challenge. Is it something that you would want to do? Is it something that you encourage us to do? I'd like to know your thoughts. Leave it in the comments below. And we will see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.